Hello everybody and thank you for joining me today. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about network security operations and how Ansible Automation Platform can help with some of the challenges in that domain. My name is Ajay Chinampara and I'm a Principal Solutions Architect at Red Hat. Within Red Hat, I focus on all things automation, including Ansible. My background is that of a traditional rod switch network engineer and I was responsible for managing large global data centers and backbone networks for over 20 years. In the past seven years or so, I've uh, focused my attention on bringing in DevOps tools and practices to the network automation space. It goes without saying that attacks on our networks are increasing in sophistication and complexity day by day. On the other hand, we also observe that a lot of famous breaches were caused because of a lack of security hygiene, namely human error. Um, for instance, researchers have found almost 85,000 unique Google API keys just by looking at public version control systems. <clears throat> now that is something that is, is, is an easy error to make. Another example that comes to mind is, is one of the famous uh, breaches at a network management company, which had an easy password created by an intern for testing purposes that lead to very, very severe uh, breaches at highly secure networks. My, the point I'm trying to make is that while we do need to target the, the sophisticated attacks on a network, there is a lot we can do to help mitigate the common breaches caused just by human error. And from my experience, one of the main reasons for these human errors is just because of the overwhelming amount of work IT operators have to deal with. There is always a requirement to do more with less. So in order to keep up with these complexities and to keep up with the scale, engineers need a new set of tools in their tool belt. And that tool is automation. If you look at industry trends, right, what started in, in as, as uh, DevOps, where there's a huge shift left movement, moving more and more stuff into the developer space, to a Git-centric operations, where engineers are learning to adapt from moving to from change control systems to managing their changes through pull requests and approvals, all the way to AI ops and no ops. So the idea with, with AI ops essentially being that machines are able to recognize the pattern and react to the pattern, eventually leading to the ideal state or of no ops, right? Essentially where there are no humans involved in ops. So these are some of the trends and patterns and and, and topics on the top of XX minds. With this uh, backdrop in mind, it's not surprising that automation has become a business imperative. It's no longer a side project or a bunch of scripts that somebody's managing or a small team is, is responsible for, but organizations are looking for a, a platform that can support multiple automation journeys across their different teams. And you can see this being reflected in the budget and spend of, of different organizations. This chart shows on the left here that IT automation spend increased from 2018 to 2019. And more significantly, you can see that in 2019, IT automation had the highest spend or the highest priority for organizations. So what are some of the challenges when it comes to automation? The biggest one I've seen is uh, people who are approaching automation for the first time try and boil the ocean. They take the most complex use case and try and automate that. Then the other challenges I've seen are when there is a lack of leadership support or not investing in their resources uh, and providing training or not selecting a tool that is able to address automation holistically. Finally, planning and prioritization. Automation sometimes 
is treated with lower priority because organizations are just struggling to keep the lights on. So let's see how some of these challenges can be addressed. Now let's take a look at some of the common operations for a net network security team. One, black holing traffic. Essentially, network engineers write rules on edge devices in either in, in reaction to malicious traffic to, to sync traffic from certain IP addresses or proactively sync known attackers. Updating configuration on firewalls, routers, IDS, IPS devices, etc. Updating updating firewall rules and, and adding IPsec tunnels are common everyday operational tasks, easy to automate. Configuration compliance. How many times have you been asked to make sure that a certain feature or configuration has been enabled or disabled across multiple devices in your data centers? I know I have been. And a final example here that I have is applying patches and operating system upgrades. Again, something that can be easily automated. So when I go around and have these discussions around implementing automation for some of these use cases, sometimes I get pushback. I, I get told that, hey, you know, we're working with closed vendor boxes that don't lend themselves to automation very easily. Many of them do not have robust APIs to work with. There is a lack of standardization within the organization, right? There might be acquisitions and mergers, and you may not even have the luxury of having a single vendor or even few vendors, right? So you may not even have control over the vendor ecosystem that's in your data centers. And more than anything else, the, the challenge that I often hear is, hey, I don't have time for this. I need to keep the lights on. I have competing priorities. In my opinion, to address this particular challenge, organizations have to take a two-pronged approach. One, you need the leadership support. Or, or, you know, or given that automation is a business critical imperative, leaders have to be able to provide their folks with resources training and the time to pursue those training. On the other hand, choosing a technology or platform for automation that does not get too much in the way of, of their work, right? Essentially, a tool that has a relatively low learning curve allows organizations to quickly adapt automation practices and implement them while focusing on their their day-to-day -day activities. From the Red Hat portfolio, the Ansible automation platform helps organizations address the second half of that problem. Ansible is simple, it's powerful, and it's agentless. It has a relatively low learning curve. It takes a batteries included approach and provides patterns and mechanisms to quickly automate your endpoints. And finally, it is agentless. The fact that Ansible is agentless is a the fact that Ansible is agentless is critical for network engineers who usually would tip for network engineers who typically have to deal with endpoints that do not support the implementation of an agent, the installation of an agent. The fact that Ansible is agentless is critical for network operators because the endpoints that we work with typically do not lend themselves to, to be able to install agents on them. I wanted to illustrate what an Ansible playbook looks like for folks who have never come across Ansible before. This slide illustrates the implementation of access controls on a Cisco ASA device. Now, what I want to point out here more than the details of the slide are the readability, right? So for a network engineer looking at this and trying to figure out what this is doing, they're able to quickly understand that. I mentioned earlier that Ansible takes a batteries included approach. One, of, one such battery, in my opinion, is network resource modules. Resource modules allow network engineers to treat components of their network configuration as services. 
imagine if you will bgp as a service or ospf as a service or you know in this example wheels as a service the network resource modules allow network engineers to express their desired end configuration as structured data in the form of source of truth as you can see on the left side of the slide here another challenge that we talked about earlier was a proliferation of network vendors and the lack of potential standard APIs or programmatic way to interact with those endpoints. And thankfully, the Ansible network ecosystem supports a wide range of tech stack, switches, routers, firewalls, load balancers, et cetera, and a whole gamut of network vendors. This alone allows network operators to be able to leverage Ansible to automate across the breadth of their tech stack. Ansible is also being used by teams outside network and security teams, right? So having that, that universal framework or universal language across the organization, and that is represented to an extent in this, this diagram here. Every team's automation journey is slightly different within large organizations. Teams that are working with programmatic endpoints that lend, to, lend themselves to programmatic configuration management typically are ahead of the curve when it comes to managing their operations through automation. On the other hand, we have teams who may not have the programming background or the programming skill sets, mostly because the endpoints that they work with do not require that, that particular skill. So organizations looking at automation holistically would like a platform that can support both contrasting automation journeys, a platform where one team can leverage the automation created by another team, essentially becoming a force multiplier. The, the platform becomes a force multiplier. Organizations while looking into platform also want to make sure that the platform itself can scale, right? Having scalability of the automation platform becomes critical the security of the platform becomes even more important because now you have automation that is configuring your business critical endpoints and you want to make sure that the the platform that is touching these endpoints are secure and supported you want to be able to have some sort of governance of the content that is used for automation you want to have a platform to provide rich analytics so that you can understand the ROI of the platform, you can understand the efficiency of the platform, you can understand how, how the platform is being used within the organization. Once again, the Ansible automation platform provides all these features. To recap, some of the operator challenges around having to deal with closed vendor boxes and having to do with multiple vendors with the lack of standardization across the data center, all these can be addressed using the Ansible automation platform. Now, you may ask, what about complex use cases, right? We, we talked about the simple use cases that can be automated using Ansible. From my experience, once organizations solve the simple use cases, they will soon realize that the more complex use cases are nothing but a collection of simple use cases. And they sometimes already solve those use cases. And all you need to do is put together all these simple use cases together in some sort of a workflow and you have solved your complex use cases. For example, I wanted to list out a few uh, complex use cases that I've worked with in the past. For instance, being able to handle out of band configuration changes being able to redirect logs during security incident investigations, addressing threat hunting scenarios, updating signatures on IPS and IDS systems, uh, reacting to incidents using automation, integration with SIEM and SOAR tools, implementing automation-based intelligent disaster recovery. These are some of the more complex use cases that can be broken down into, into simpler components and solved individually and finally can come together as a complex orchestration solution. I wanna highlight some of the key features that are part of the Ansible Automation Controller that enables addressing some of these complex use cases, the ability to manage custom credentials, the ability to be for automation to be triggered by webhooks, 
uh, having centralized logging and audit trail from a security standpoint, right? Uh, the ability to build workflows to chain together the simple automation tasks to build out that complex use case. These are all features that are part of the automation controller, which is part of the Ansible automation platform. Finally, I wanted to share a big picture architecture drawing of the various components of the Ansible automation platform and how they come together to provide those complex automation use cases. So at the middle here, we have the automation controller that talks to the various endpoints. You can potentially, you, if there are data centers that are, the automation controller can also be extended to networks like uh, DMZ networks or different cloud service providers to localize automation within those networks. Private Automation Hub is another component of the Ansible automation platform and serves as a content repository for secure content that the automation controller can use to run the, run the playbooks. And then there are various cloud hosted components of the platform that allows decision makers that allows decision makers to understand their automation footprint and review and review the efficiency of the ansible footprint within their organizations as next steps i invite you to visit some of these links that can provide you a lot more in-depth information thank you and i hope this session was interesting and useful to you